Now, there's no such thing as one size fits all strategy when it comes to banking for digital nomads. And there's a simple reason for that. Every digital nomad is different. Different citizenship, different source of income, different banking requirements. So the banking strategy that's best for each digital nomad needs to be tailored to meet their specific requirements and client profile. And while there are a few good resources on the internet, 99% of websites that cover banking for digital nomads only share the solutions that pay them the highest commissions. In other words, few discuss real solutions, strategies, special service combinations, and banking stacks that solve major problems and inefficiencies related to banking for digital nomads. Fortunately, there are some excellent banking options and alternatives available. And since there's enough commonality across the digital nomad community, we can highlight some important hacks, opportunities, and considerations that will make banking for digital nomads easier to navigate and access. But before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get alerted every time we post new non-resident banking opportunities. Now, to help you get started with banking for digital nomads, we have a free non-resident banking starter guide. It's designed to help non-resident and foreigners open bank accounts. So don't forget to download your copy using the link in the description below. Banking for Digital Nomads 101. Now, when it comes to banking for digital nomads, those just starting out often think that they can access any bank they want. That is, until they start applying for accounts. Very quickly, digital nomads realize that opening bank accounts abroad and even at home, is not as easy as it should be. If you don't have the right citizenship or mix of residential ties, you don't have a chance at opening an account. That's why today, most banking for digital nomads is increasingly centered around fintechs, such as EMIs, payment institutions, money transfer services, and prepaid cards. But this approach isn't without challenges. While there are new fintech solutions launched each year, many are restrictive and only accept people with certain nationalities and residencies. And they typically have very specific criteria that new clients have to meet. More on that in a little bit. Meanwhile, traditional banks are often overlooked due to increasingly difficult account opening, a reluctance to accept non-residents, lack of remote opening options, and high costs. Of course, there are still plenty of options out there that can overcome these hurdles. But you need to know where to find them and how to apply. For these reasons, the most optimal banking stack for a digital nomad is often a traditional bank in combination with fintech solutions that are international and low cost. So it's no surprise that when banking for digital nomads, most people end up considering banking options with lax requirements or those that don't impose certain requirements at all. That usually results in digital banking solutions being chosen. They're easy to open, affordable, sometimes, entirely online and offer tailored solutions for younger internationally mobile customers. That said, they do have some limitations. And while fintechs do meet the initial requirements of banking for digital nomads, in reality, they're best for small transfers and low-level day-to-day transactional banking. In other words, don't keep your life savings in a fintech and don't use them for large transactions. This is risky. In addition, most fintechs do not hold banking licenses, are not subject to banking regulations, and don't have deposit insurance. So if a fintech goes bankrupt, well, there's no safety net and customers can lose their deposits. Small offshore banks and banks in lower quality jurisdictions have challenges as well. For example, many small offshore banks have high fees and charge every single item imaginable, like monthly fee, online banking fee, fee for viewing transaction history, fee for bank statements, fee for reference letters, fee for account closure. You get where I'm going. Additionally, some banks located in lower quality jurisdictions are notoriously difficult to reach, have poor customer service, limited English language support, archaic online interfaces, and other limitations which can make it very difficult to access your money or resolve problems. So, needless to say, there are better options out there when banking for digital nomads. In fact, the most optimal and safest solution when banking for digital nomads is combining a traditional bank with fintech solutions. The only problem is finding banks that are digital nomad friendly and cater to internationally mobile non-residents is getting harder. Due to increasing regulations and new compliance rules, many banks now view non-residents, digital nomads, frequent travelers and those without tax residency and economic substance as high risk customers. That leaves us with good banks outside of international banking hubs and digital nomad friendly banks, both of which are tough to find. 
But our team regularly helps Global Bank's insiders uncover such options based on their specific account opening objectives and their client profiles. Navigating the choices when banking for digital nomads. Now, sure, on the surface, it may look like there are a ton of choices, but there really aren't. And many people get stuck, especially if their accounts get blocked, restricted, or terminated. That's why carefully choosing which banks or fintechs you open accounts with is critical, and it can help you avoid serious headaches later on. Now, to help with account opening choices, our team released a report focused on European EMI and fintech options for non-EEA residents and non-EEA companies. In it, we break down over 20 EMIs in Europe alone, highlighting lesser known and rarely talked about banking alternatives, new opportunities, specific hacks and loopholes, and exactly how to navigate account opening as a location independent entrepreneur with limited European connections. But EMIs aren't the only option. In fact, the combination of EMIs, fintechs, and banks can offer much better solutions. With this in mind, we recommend reevaluating your entire banking stack. Then, identify the most optimal combination of digital nomad friendly banking solutions, acquire those relationships, and then pair them together. Here's what this might look like Find a solution like Revolut, N26, or NEAT that caters to your country or region of residency to act as cost effective ways for you to receive payment. Next, do like every other business and use a solution like TransferWise or IBAN first if you have higher volume businesses and lock in low cost outgoing transfers. Finally, pair a traditional account at a high quality brick and mortar bank to hold your deposits, facilitate investments, and provide access to financing and a wider range of banking services. Now, let's take a look at the three most important catalysts that will negatively impact and shape banking for digital nomads in the future. As we shared in our recent 2020 edition of the Ultimate Guide to International Banking, there are some radically important changes coming that will impact banking for everyone. But these changes will have an outsized impact on banking for digital nomads. In other words, a few of the existing banking difficulties and inconveniences that currently exist for digital nomads will become much more pressing, widespread, and difficult to overcome in the future. Here's a look at the top three changes digital nomads need to watch out for now. Number one, personal tax residency. Many digital nomads live across several countries throughout the year and don't establish tax residency in any one country. And while this might be totally fine for you personally, it's not great for banking. Plus, not establishing tax residency anywhere also has unintended tax reporting consequences and complications that most people are totally unaware of. In fact, it is becoming increasingly difficult to open a bank account without a tax identification number from your country of residency nowadays. Here's an example. Let's say a German digital nomad named Robert opens a bank account in Singapore. Robert travels frequently. He's never bothered to formally establish a tax residency anywhere. He splits his time between Germany, Indonesia, and Bermuda. When the bank asks him to confirm his tax residency, he proudly proclaims, well, I don't have a tax residency anywhere. I spend time in three countries and here's a bank statement with my address in Indonesia. The result? Well, the bank either A, doesn't open an account, or B, sends Bob's information to every country that might claim him as a resident, like Germany, Indonesia, and Bermuda. As many digital nomads have already discovered, establishing tax residency somewhere is a must. With a strategically chosen tax residency, you can lock in low or zero tax rates, ensure multiple countries don't claim you as a tax resident, access better banking options, and operate more efficiently and more cost-effectively as a digital nomad. Number two, corporate tax ID and operating location. Now, regardless of where you're from, chances are you're using a company to facilitate your location independent business. This might be a US LLC, UK LLP, BVIBC, Estonian OU, Canadian LP, or any other number of the options available. Each of these structures have their pros and cons, but in general, each of them offer good value when it comes to optimizing taxes, creating a legal barrier between the owner and the business, and in some cases, making banking for digital nomads easier. But there's a problem. If you're a digital nomad operating a location independent business, where is your business located? And where does your business pay tax? This is a problem that many digital nomads and other international entrepreneurs are now facing. And it's not an easy challenge to overcome. As for corporate tax IDs, it has become almost universally required by banks that you provide this bit of data. If you don't, your application is on the fast track to being denied. Number three, de-risking by digital platforms. When new digital banks and fintechs launch, they cast a wide net, opening accounts for anyone and everyone. But then they get tough on compliance, get more risk averse and start closing accounts. The game plan is always the same, bring in as many customers as possible, bulk up the customer list, and then trim the fat later on. 
It's like a professional bodybuilder bulking and then cutting fat before a competition. Now, fintechs do this in pursuit of the elusive network effect that transform businesses into the next unicorn. But when it comes to banking for digital nomads, this could cause serious problems. Fortunately, there are several useful fintech options still available for digital nomads. However, the specific solutions chosen ultimately depend on criteria such as citizenship, residency, phone and address requirements, source of income, transaction activity, and volume, desired currencies, and more. Start banking for digital nomads today. To start opening accounts today, well, you can obviously use the information that I've shared in this video. Or you can access one of our account opening services and start taking action today. Each of our premium services are designed to help non-resident individuals, foreigners, and their businesses open international bank accounts. Whether you need personal, private, business, offshore, or even U.S. banking, we have an account opening solution that will work for you. You can get started with Global Bank's IQ, our international banking intelligence service. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions and all the tools you need to find and open accounts with top banks around the world. Plus, you'll unlock our international intelligence reports, account opening strategies, international bank database, and much more. We also have a dedicated U.S. account opening service called Global Banks USA, which is 100% focused on helping non-residents, foreigners, and even foreign and offshore companies open bank accounts in the U.S. It involves direct one-on-one -on -one support from our team of experts and includes access to our U.S. banking intelligence reports, U.S. account opening strategies, and U.S. bank database. And, of course, there's our flagship service, Global Banks Insider. With Global Banks Insider, you'll get access to everything we offer, including all of the benefits in Global Banks IQ and Global Banks USA, plus our entire library of premium reports, the entire Global Banks database, and dedicated one-on-one -on -one support from our team of international banking experts to help you find and open the accounts you need. So, no matter where you're looking to bank in the world, you're only a few clicks away from finding and opening international accounts. To get started, just click the link in the description below to learn more about the available options. And before signing off, don't forget to subscribe so you get alerted every time we share new banking opportunities. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.